Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Hobbyist Now, your one-stop shop. For all things nerdy and dirty. That's right. That's right. I'm Claudian, and of course, this is the better half, Nick. You. Um, we just ask that you don't uh, f- don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share if you like what you see and hear. Um, also, leave a comment. We would really love to hear from you. Uh, we're also on Spotify. Our link is actually in the bio. Yeah. Also, our Instagram and... Uh, the audio version of this recording is also in the uh, episode description. All right, so we're gonna start our uh, we're gonna start our show like we usually do with some news. Um, but first, let me ask you a question, Mike. Are you in the Are you in the Christmas spirit? I'm always in the Christmas spirit. Okay, well I'm not. Soon but as, anyways, as soon as Halloween <laughs> ends, it's Christmas. Okay, well Halloween ends, and I'm like, please next year just come around. <laughs> um, no, but we're getting a little Christmassy this this uh, episode. So, um, yeah, we're going to actually start with, in fact, a uh, TV special. We all love TV specials, right? Well, um, we're going to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special, TV special. So the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special is an American um, television special written and directed by the great James Gunn um, from the streaming service Disney+. Plus. Um, based on Marvel Comics uh, featuring the superhero team from Guardians of the Galaxy, it is uh, the second Marvel Studios special presentation in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU, uh, sharing continuity with uh, the, f- the films and television series of the franchise. The special is uh, produced by uh, Marvel Studios and follows the Guardians of the Galaxy as they celebrate Christmas and search for a present for their leader, Peter Quill. Um, it stars Chris Pratt, David Batista, uh, Karen Gillian, uh, Pom Klemeth, uh, Vin Diesel, uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, Sean, Sean Gunn, um, brother to James Gunn, and a, and a very special cameo by uh, our one and only Michael Roker. Um, uh, reprises their roles as uh, the uh, guardians of the previous MCU media um, with special with the special also featuring the the band uh, old uh, 97s and a hilarious Kevin Kevin Bacon um, cameo as a fictitious version of himself but not that fictitious but maybe who knows he, he's the coolest guy in the world anyways uh, gun had uh, worked on the uh, concept for the special during the production of Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2 which was 2017, um, before it was announced in December 2020. Uh, filming occurred from February uh, to late April 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia, and Los Angeles during the production of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is coming out in 2023. So uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special was released on Disney+, Plus, as I mentioned before. Um, it was on uh, November 25th. Uh, 2022 serving as the conclusion of the phase four thank god of the mcu now the special uh received actually positive reviews from uh the critics for its humor uh guns direction and uh, the cast performance so i did see it it runs like about god like maybe 45 minutes it's not even a full hour but uh yes uh kevin bacon is in it um, he's, it's pretty funny. Um, I got, we finally get to hear, um, Astro speak the dog. So Astro, um, is in, in, is in this special. Um, of course, Groot is older and basically everybody else that's in it. And then, like I mentioned, there's a real touching scenes with, uh, Michael Roker uh, from the past. So it's like a, um, past thing with, um, that they did actually, and I think they did it in a cartoon style for that. But mm. the rest of the thing is <clears throat> live action. Um, but yeah, so that was um, that was a uh, that was that was fun. I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't like a real like you know hour and a half or anything. So uh, they're singing it, and um, yeah, you get to see uh, you get to see a lot of little little tiny. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, if you really look, you kind of see, like, little, like, uh, 
Marvel Easter eggs little Easter eggs and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't it's stuff in like pivotal. So, so, if, <laughs> so if you miss it, it's not like you're gonna be, lost. you know, you're gonna be lost or anything for the volume three. Like I said, I just really like the Astro has an actual couple couple lines in it, and it's hilarious. For those who don't know, Astro was was uh, uh, cameoed in. The collector, the collector had Astro, and it oh was, yeah, in the tube. Yeah, it was in one of those tubes. I think that might have been the original or something. They're like, "What's the deal with the dog?" You know what I mean? This is like a, just a dog in a, in a astronaut uniform. That's Astro. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm really stoked for the uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It looks I love like the, the trailer the just dropped, movies. by the way, um, just the other day from our recording. And actually, a lot of trailers dropped. I know we're kind of going off of our script. But Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. This, this, this uh, the Marvel. I mean, um, Guardians, and then, um, what else dropped? The, the, oh, uh, the new Transformers. Oh yeah, the uh, Beast Wars. The Beast, yeah, the Beast one. Um, but we're not gonna really get into those. I'm just saying those did drop. But check them out. You can find those on YouTube. So, but okay. So we're gonna move on though. Um, to uh, gaming though. Um, so we're gonna talk about. Uh, One Piece Odyssey, uh, which will be available on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, and PC. Um, And that release will be January 13th. Uh, One Piece Odyssey is an RPG um, game. Uh, During during their voyage, uh, the Straw Hats, led by um, Monkey D. Luffy, are in fact swallowed by a huge storm at sea. They end up on a mysterious island uh, full of nature, um, n- natural um, amenities, uh, the storm, and becomes uh, separated from each other. Uh, the crew set out on a, a uh, new adventure's uh, journey filled with wonders of a raging nature, f- uh, fully full, powerful enemies, and uh, strange encounters uh, with island locals um work together with luffy and his crew to set sail once again um you ever play those games uh those kind of i haven't played the one piece odyssey game but i did pl- i have played a couple of uh, the one piece games and they're usually pretty good okay okay um so we're gonna move on to uh i know your favorite the nintendo switch game we're in a uh, fire emblem in- engaged um which is gonna be on the switch uh, January 20th um, is the release date. Uh, looks to play more like uh, your more recent Fire Emblem games. So if you're familiar with that, you will be um, you will be basically right at home. Uh, Summon uh, valiant heroes uh, like um, Marth and um, Cecia with uh, the powers of uh, Emerald Rings and add uh, their powers to yours in this brand new Fire Emblem story. Aside from uh, merging appearances, um, engage, engaging t- uh, lets you inherit weapons, uh, skills, and more than these battle-tested legends. Uh, the turn-based tactical battle system returns with a fresh cast of characters you can customize and engage uh, to carefully craft your strategy. Um, to uh, wrap up for me on the gaming we're going back to something that's true to horror hearts uh uh dead space <laughs> um just so you know it's coming out if you haven't been listening to us it is uh yep uh dead space which will be on the playstation 5 xbox series xs and pc on january 27th the uh sci-fi survival uh horror classic returns completely rebuilt uh to the offer of an even more immersive experience including visuals um audio and gameplay improvements while uh staying faithful to the original game's thrilling uh vision um we're stoked about it um hopefully we get our hands on it when it comes out and you know maybe we'll get some gameplay once uh we'll definitely get some gameplay once we get it yeah so um now that ends my, my part of the news. Um, we're going to actually move to what everybody's here for. That's, of course, Nick and the same figures. Same reason I'm here. And the same reason you're only here, yeah. No, <laughs> no um, we're going to move on to uh, Nick's favorite, though, uh, the, the figures. 
All right, so all of these will be re releasing in uh, January 2023. Um, we start off with some video game adjacent stuff. Uh, Kachu Kabuki, Tales of Arise, Alfin. He's a 1 8th PVC figure. Hmm. He'll run you about $147. He's pretty large. I mean, he's a, he's a 1 8th character, yeah. so he's definitely not small. Um, then we run into Bandai Spirits, Figure Arts, uh, Zero, Daki, uh, Daki, and Gitaro. Uh, they'll both run you about 9581. Uh, again, they're, they look to be pretty large as well. Um, very detailed. I mean, they look like they were literally ripped right out of the anime. They're from Demon Slayer, for those who don't know. Then we move on to something that me and him yeah. are quite familiar with. Uh, the Bandai Spirits Figure Rise uh, Standard Angemon plastic model kit no. uh he will run you about 18 dollars uh looks really cool I, I will definitely be snatching one of these i love the digimon model kits i've done uh magnamon i did uh Pi, uh Pyldramon and um war graymon they're can't, awesome can't really go wrong with uh bandai spirits to be honest. no they're they're fantastic um and then we move on to alice gun shoki shoju no road or virgin road uh menno uh, she's a one seventh PVC figure. It's she's the main character from the Executioner and Her Way of Life, which is on High Dive. Um, she'll run you about one hundred ninety six dollars and seventy eight cents. But she's a again one seventh figure, mm -hmm. so she's relatively large. Um, really good looking figure, and again, all these will be shown on the side. Um, then we move on to some more anime news. Um, the Ranking of Kings, Treasure Chest of Courage, uh, which is going to be a new side story. Uh, it will be dropping April of 2023. Uh, Studio Wit will still be there. Um, so this is based on the manga by uh, Sosuke to uh, Toka. Uh, Ranking of Kings is directed by Yusuke Hata um, and at Wit Studios uh, with series composition by uh, Taku Kumisho, who uh, is from Fruit Baskets. Character design by uh, Atsuko Nozaka. And music by uh, Mayoko, uh, Cells at Work. An untold adventure with Boji and Kage uh, waits in the previously announced follow-up special to 2021's Ranking of Kings, uh, subtitled Yuki no Takobaro, uh, Treasure Chest of Courage. Hmm. Um, some video game slash anime news. Um, More of a collab, right? Yeah. No. Uh, Fortnite will actually be getting... Uh, My Hero Academia collaboration. It looks like Deku and All Might are so far the only two that have been announced. But beyond that, we can only assume that there will be more characters, kind of like they did with Dragon Ball and Naruto. Um, but the specials will be added into the game, at least the one that I've seen, um, which was like Detroit Smash, I think. Uh, so kind of like the Kamehameha for those who have played, except for it looks like it's huge. <laughs> so the Kamehameha was just a straight-up laser beam. Um this one is just this massive punch, and it just it, it destroys stuff. So this is going to be super annoying for those who have played the game prior. Um, Geralt will also be joining the Fortnite series. Kind of doesn't look like he has any specials, but it looks like he'll be joining. And then we'll also finally get to rip and tear as the Doom guy. Yes, which <laughs> I'm excited about, but it's going to be weird to watch him not tear shit apart. Yeah, I mean he's a little. Yeah. It's a kids game. Um. And then we'll move on from there to uh, Mob Psycho 100 uh, actually revealed uh, in a, or the final arc was revealed of season three. Um, so having begun on October 6th, the third season will enter its concluding arc with episode eight on December 1st. Adapting from the uh, manga series written and illustrated by one, Mob Psycho 100 follows a high school kid, Kageyama, who receives the nickname Mob because he is so easily blends into the background. Uh, but unbeknownst to him or around him mob actually has powerful psychic abilities um the season three is actually in J uh currently airing in japan and is being streamed on crunchyroll um and then we will actually be moving on to our main topic which yeah. i mean is the most christmas movie be uh, obviously die hard. die hard and uh, lethal weapon obviously i mean yeah and, and uh, of course, that's that's going to be uh, the nine the nineteen eighty four classic uh, Gremlins, and uh, we're going to go over Gremlins uh, two as well. And um, for those who may or may not know, um, who like follow us on Instagram or notice our thumbnails, you may see a uh, may see a, a parrot in, in our photos. Uh, that's that's my parrot. Um, if anybody was wondering where that bird came from, 
and uh, his name is in fact Gizmo, and I did name him after this character. So uh, yeah, so that's Gizmo, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna talk about the origin of Gizmo uh, from the Gremlins show. So all right. Anyways, um, yeah, so we're gonna start with Gremlins, the original, um, 1984, um, and uh, you know, I guess we consider it kind of a Christmas movie. It's a little oddball one, but um, yeah. So Gremlins um, begins with um, a struggling inventor, uh, Randall uh, Pelzer, um, vis- who visits a uh, Chinatown antique store, hoping to uh, find a Christmas present for his son Billy. Inside, Randall uh, encounters a, a small uh, furry creature called a mogwai. The owner, uh, Mr. Wang, uh, refuses to sell uh, to Randall the creature, but his grandson secretly does, warning Randall to remember, uh, though, that the three important rules. First, do not expose the mogwais to light, especially sunlight, which can kill them. Do not let it come into contact with water and above all never feed it after midnight which we all find out why all those cases so um randall returns uh then home back to kingston falls where he gives uh the mogwai to uh billy as a pet billy works in the loco uh, uh bank but fears that his dog barney will be put down by the widowed uh, miser uh, Miss uh, Beagle. Randall names uh, the Mogwai Gizmo and explains the the three rules. When Billy's uh, young friend Pete, um, who's played by the, the great uh, Corey, Corey Feldman, Feldman um, and this was what we find out a year before Goonies, um, but he's at that exact age, um, accidentally spills uh, water over Gizmo. Five more uh, Mogwais uh uh, spawn from his back, um, a more troublemaking sort led by an aggressive stripe, uh, named for his turf of fur on his head. Uh, Billy shows one of the uh, Mogwais to his former elementary school uh, science teacher, Mr. Hansen, uh, spawning spawning another uh, another Mogwai, and on whom Hansen experiments on um, back on back at home uh, stripes. And his fellow Mogwai trick Billy into feeding them after midnight uh, by serving uh, by severing the uh, power cord on his alarm clock. Who remembers those <laughs> alarm clocks? Uh, they they actually uh, what happens? They form cocoons, and as as does uh, actually uh, Hanson's Mogwai, which uh, soon begin to hatch, emerging as mischievous dark green reptilian monsters, whom they. Uh, whom then they torture Gizmo and it, and attack Billy's uh, mother, uh, Len. Uh, Hanson is killed by the by his gremlin. In fact, um, it's a it's an off camera kill. Len and Bill Len and Billy are able to kill off uh, the gremlins except for Stripes, who escapes to the local YMCA. That's where everybody goes. There, Stripes jumps into the uh, swimming pool, uh, spawning an army of gremlins who wreck uh, havoc on Kingston Falls. Many people are actually injured or outright killed by the Gremlins' rampage. Um, some of it was kind of, a lot of it was kind of hilarious in ways, so, um, but including uh, Miss Beagle, in fact. Um, Billy reports this to the police, but they provide to be uh, no help as they uh, don't believe his story, even after his sh- after they show he shows them Gizmo. And he's, like, trying to explain it, and they're, like, all, like, well, well, well. What do you mean this? What do you mean that? You know, kind of like the doofus sheriffs. You know, as uh, well, one was a sheriff, the other was like the deputy. But as Billy uh, rescues his girlfriend Kate uh, Burgeon, they uh, hide in the uh, non, non now abandoned bank where Kate reveals to Billy and Gizmo why she hates Christmas. And this is oftentimes considered the most this probably the hardest scene for most people. Um, when she was nine years old, her father went missing on Christmas Eve and did not come home on Christmas Day either. Several days later, um, she was uh, cleaning um, the chimney and, um, yep, found found her father um, 
in the chimney, dressed as Santa Claus. Um, planning to surprise her and her mother, he had accidentally slipped and broke his neck while climbing down the chimney. Still suffering post from post-traumatic stress disorder, and because of the event, Kate confesses this is how she discovered the truth about Santa Claus. And actually, in the second movie, there's another callback, um, which is done differently. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's that scene's often talked about. Actually, it's, a lot of times it's criticized. Um, but yeah, Billy and Kate discover that the town has fallen uh, silent and the uh, Gremlins are, in fact, watching course snow white and the seven dwarfs that's all they want to watch is snow white and the seven dwarfs it's a, again there's a callback to it in the second movie too in uh the local theater uh and and mind you there's a special cameo with hulk hogan in that scene too but um so yeah uh so they set off in fact a uh, natural gas explosion incinerating all the uh gremlins except for stripes who uh who's left to uh commandeer um more candy at the uh, Montgomery, <laughs> Montgomery Ward store across uh, the street. Uh, who remembers that store? As morning approaches, they follow Stripes to the department store where Stripes attempts to use a uh, water fountain uh, to spawn more gremlins. Gizmo opens uh, the skylight, in fact, exposing Stripes to the sunset and killing him. As the local news reports on the uh, the day's mysterious uh, tragedies, uh, Mr. Wang reclaims Gizmo at the uh, Peltzer's home. Uh, he criticized both the Peltzer's and Western civilization and TV, by the way, and TVs, for their uh, carelessness uh, with uh, nature. However, as he turns to leave, Gizmo leaves. Uh, Gizmo, having bonded with Billy, begs the young man's uh, goodbye. A touched Mr. Wing, then uh, concedes that Billy may be ready one day, but until then, Gizmo will just have to wait. Um, so a little bit of interesting facts about the uh, the visual effects, because this film actually is very visually effect heavy. Um, it's all puppeteering, so a lot of stuff is in camera. Uh, there was no real CGI as we, we have today. But um, yeah, so some of the performances... Um, uh, that were shot on the uh, courthouse square and colonial street sets of the universal of the universal studio lot in universal city, California. Miss Beagle's house was one such set as a, as well as the opening street scene in Chinatown, which were filmed on actually on the Warner brothers studio back lot. This required fake snow. Uh, Dante felt it was uh, an atmosphere. It was atmospheric uh, that, they would make a special effects more convincing as the special effects uh, relied mainly on puppeteering a, an earlier attempt to in fact use monkeys was abandoned because the test monkeys panicked when they uh, were made to wear uh, gremlin heads hats. Uh, the, the actors worked alongside some of the puppets. Um, none, nonetheless, after the actors finished their work for good, a great deal of, uh, effort was uh, spent finishing the effects. Uh, numerous small rubber puppets, some of which were um, mechanical, were used uh, to portray Gizmo and the Gremlins. They were designed by uh, Chris Wallace. Uh, there uh, was more than one Gizmo puppet, in fact. And occasionally, uh, Gillian, when carrying one, would set him down off camera. And then, and when Gizmo appeared again, set on the surface it was actually in fact another puppet wired to the surface these puppets had uh many limitations um as a lot of that kind of stuff did back then uh the gizmo puppet uh was uh, particularly frustrating because they were really small and thus broke down more um while wallace recommended making the mogwais larger to make their creature and function easier for the special effects team Dante insisted on keeping the size small um, enhance in, to enhance the cuteness of the creatures uh, constantly to uh, the uh, sas satisfying the uh, the crew a, a scene was included in which the gremlins 
hang a gizmo on a wall and throw darts on him. This was included on a list that the crew created known as known to them as the horrible things to do to gizmo list. That's terrible. Oh my god, you should all be ashamed. Should all be ashamed. But anyways, a few uh uh, marionettes um, were also used. Other special effects required large mogwai faces and ears to be produced for close-ups as the puppets were less capable of conveying emotions. Um, cons- consequently, a large props uh, simultan- assimilating food were needed for uh, the close-ups in the scene in which the mogwai feast after midnight. And a large... Um, Gizmo puppet was also needed for the uh, scene in which uh, he multiplies. Now, this is very interesting. The new Mogwais who uh, popped out of uh, Gizmo's body as um, as small furry balls, which then start to grow, were actually balloons um, that expanded as such. Wallace uh, had also uh, created the uh, exploding gremlins in the microwave by the means of a balloon that was allowed to burst. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and, oh, my God, the, the burst scene just, that looks, like, terrible. Like, yeah, it does. Just imagine just, like, bub- boils just boiling on you, and then you got babies, Ooh. and they're all assholes. Like, <laughs> talk about that. I never understood that, but why that, why they're so different from him. You know what I mean? Like, um, something that I know uh, Nick's really – was kind of stoked to finding out uh, Howie Mandel. Yes, uh, the same Howie Mandel from American Got Talent uh, actually provided the voice of Gizmo and uh, and prolific uh, voice actor Frank Walker uh, provided the uh, voice of Stripe. It was Welker who uh, suggested Mandel's performance in Gremlins. In fact, the puppets uh, lines were mostly, in fact, invented by the voice actors based on cues from uh, the physical actions of the puppets, which were filmed before the voice work even began. When developing the voice for Gizmo, Mendel explained, Gizmo was a cute, naive, and so, you know, when I got in touch with, so, you know, I got in touch with that, I couldn't envision going any other way or doing something different with it. The majority of the other Gremlin voices were performed by um, Michael Winslow and Peter Cullen, while remaining voices were done by Bob Bergens, Fred Newman, Mark Dutson, Bob Holt, and Michael Sheenhan. Um, a fun fun trivia. When the actually when the Gremlins attack uh, the mom from the from the Christmas tree and uh, the tree falls on top of her, you can uh, clearly see a member of the crew with uh, actual eyeglasses wearing a red shirt standing behind the tree, pushing it <laughs> forward on top of her. This actually happens at the 54 minute and 30 second mark. When, uh, the, when the professor is trying to find the gremlin, he is in the uh, room with a movie playing. Uh, it was like a biology movie with like show like Sophocus or something like that. Um, the projector that is, uh, playing the uh, movie is actually moving backwards. This happens from 44 minutes, 30 seconds, to 47 minutes and 35 seconds. In the scene where the cop car uh, flips over, if you pay attention, you can see the actual metal plate that uh, is welded under the uh, car that helps it flip over. This is at 1 hour, 8 minutes, and 25 seconds. In the classroom, a a gremlin takes an apple when it eats it behind a desk. The gremlin then uh, throws it back uh, from behind the desk. Look closely and you'll see, in fact, it is actually being thrown by a human hand, not a gremlin. This is actually at the 48-minute mark. When Stripe is attacking Billy uh, with a chainsaw... Oh, my God. Actually, that scene was pretty crazy. Uh, uh, I just thought of, like, Evil Dead. Like, oh, when, yeah. I, when I saw that... When Stripe is attacking Billy with the chainsaw, when the uh, camera pans to the right... Uh, before the stripe attacks, you can actually see a crew member's hand place uh, stripes over Billy. Also, you can you will notice that there is a piece of plywood attached to stripes' feet. This is from one hour twenty nine minutes ten seconds to one hour thirty two minutes and fifty five seconds. Uh, during the scene with the uh, malfunctioning juice maker, when it uh, goes nuts, there's 
is no possible way that all the all that juice and pulp could have come from just one orange. That was at the 22 minute 45 second mark. Yeah, it was uh, it was that was always something that was obviously done as a gag, like like because it just explodes everywhere. Um, the word um, "magwai" means actually evil spirit. Um, <clears throat> at the and actually at the in, uh, inventor uh, inventors convention, you can see many cameos. In fact, uh, one of them is well noticed. Both Robbie the robot. Um, there's a cameo of the time machine from uh, George Pal's version. Uh, you even see Steven Stillbird as the man on a motorized uh, wheelchair. And uh, legendary uh, film composer Jeffrey Goldsmith, who also uh, composed this, this film, as the man outside the phone booth wearing a cowboy hat. And this was at the 43-minute, five-second mark. Uh, the original script features a scene where the gremlins attack in McDonald's and eats the customers, but refuses to touch the hamburgers. So, Gremlins. Um, I grew up on this movie. Um, it, it's like I said, it's a it's an Abilene it's an Abilene uh, production. So that was kind of Steelbird's thing. So it was shot with Panavision cameras, lenses. Um, they all they all have certain aesthetics to them because um, they're pretty. In clothes, like uh, even speaking of which, like Chris Columbus, who who uh, wrote uh, this 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 film, who was a screenwriter at the time, and did the visual effects. He um, many people would know him as the director of the original Harry Potter movie, the first one. And uh, you know, like back then, like you, when you got into like Abilene and stuff like that, you basically just you became like a staff writer essentially. So like a lot of times you'd see these people come up with all these sorts of like, like, Oh, Chris Columbus, Chris Columbus, Chris Columbus, like boom, 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 boom. Because they were all kind of like, um, basically they were staff workers essentially. And so, cause Steelbird really believed in like a, believes in a kind of like a nine to five film making kind of style. So he doesn't really, uh, they don't really, to get in at the time, it would have been really, it was really dope because cause you're going to definitely be working. You're definitely going to be on projects, you know. And, and yeah, um, Chris Clemens is one of the people that came out of it. And, uh, you know, he, he's gone and done done pretty good, I, I would say. I mean, I, I know he's been kind of quiet more recently, but, um, yeah, I, like I said, my, my parrot, his name is <laughs> Gizmo. So the... Uh, the animations are just adorable. Like, oh, God, yeah. The expressions, like, I just can't believe how mean these things came out. Like, they were just like, like, man, like, even Strice was kind of, like, aggressive when Corey Feldman was going to, oh, yeah, and he was like, rah, 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 rah. yeah, yeah, and you're just like, <laughs> you're like, what the hell? Like, yeah, like, so, and it never explained, like, why that is or anything. Um, but, yeah, uh, uh, what, what, I mean, it, it's, an, it's it's I don't know it's an 80s mid 80s movie it, it has all the tropes uh, you see a lot of V V dubs <laughs> v, you know uh, Volkswagens you you see uh, I I love movies where it kind of highlights like old like old tech and stuff so the the father is an inventor so he's got these crazy ideas so like he first comes to the shop with the uh, the all the one all one thing tool and it can. It can shave. You can brush your teeth. Buddy. The bathroom buddy, yeah. And then, uh, oh, and then remember at the end, he he gives him the uh, the smokeless oh, God, cigarette yeah. thing, and the guy, the Wang's like, you know, a man tried to sell me this, you know. So, um, it is what it is. A lot of like, a lot of like real well known actors actually are in this movie, like like eighties actors especially. Um, I think uh, what Frank uh, Fred Fred Miller uh, who plays the uh, he's in the second one too. He, he they go visit New York him and his wife in that movie, but he was I think his name's Fred Miller. Very very uh, prol- like if you saw him you would recognize him. He's very recognizable. A lot of a lot of recognizable actors in this. Um, Phoebe Gates who oh, yeah. uh, who uh, s- excuse us if we get a little vulgar, but. Uh, she she's kind of very famous for uh for another for another movie uh fast time at richmond high um she's the uh 
if you don't know, she's the chick that uh, you often see in like videos where she, she's like wearing a red bathing suit. And she gets out of the pool, and then she's like walking up to a guy, and she takes off her uh, her top, and there they are. And uh, it's funny because that actor is actually the actor who plays the bank manager, <laughs> the mid the mid bank manager, do the you know the snot the snooty one. Um, he's a well-known actor. He's in a lot of movies, too. Um, I can't recall his name offhand, but if you saw him and heard his voice, especially his voice, you would have been like, oh, yeah, I know that actor. You just you just know him. He was he was in, like, Beverly Cops movie. He was in and, the Santa Claus movies as well. He plays the stepdad. Oh, yeah, yeah, he does. Yep, yep. Um, so he uh, he's in it. I don't, I don't know if the main actor in this one ever really got real fame, really, but a lot of other people are just... Yeah, kind of mid tier to kind of like you know character actors is what what they're called people that you don't really know their names per se but you recognize their face and like I've seen him before and you just can't place it but yeah no it's a great movie um highly recommended it. it's just it's just enjoyment um it's about it's about what uh hour and 40 minute long movie something like that an hour 50 hour 40 40 yeah it's not even like two hours so um and it's a fun movie it's a quick movie and uh i kind of highlights i love movies that highlights 80s stuff so but yeah um i would rank i would rank this movie Like to me, I don't see anything wrong with it, so it's it's pretty high. Probably like an like an eight and a half to nine. I would give it a nine. Yeah, it's just one of those movies that when you watch it, it's like nothing's wrong with it. It's just it's, it's, it's just eighties. It's just eighties, and like the it's one of those movies where you just watch it and it's like like okay, that's a good movie. Like it wasn't like I don't know, there was like no problems with it. Like it was just kind of like like you're just ready for. I, I just miss those kind of movies. I ain't gonna be lie to you. So. Right. Bring back 80s movies. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, Gremlins 2, Bad Batch, uh, again, 90s movie, um, literally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. After uh, his owner, Mr. Wing, dies, the Mogwai Gizmo becomes the guinea pig of scientists in a lab at Clamp Center, a state-of-the-art high-rise building in Manhattan owned by eccentric billionaire Daniel Clamp. Uh, at the mercy of the chief researcher, Dr. Cathier, Gizmo is researched or rescued by his former owner, Billy Peltzer, and his fiance Kate both of whom were work elsewhere in the building. Clamp's best friend, Billy, upon being impressed by his skill in concept design, sparking the interest of Billy's superior, Marla Bloodstone, Gizmo is left in the office where water spills on his head from a broken drinking fountain and spawns four new Mogwai, one of them being Mohawk, a reincarnation of Stripe. Uh, they cage Gizmo in an air vent and later eat at the building's food court after midnight, becoming gremlins. Uh, after Gizmo escapes from the vent, Mohawk, uh, captures and tortures him. The other gremlins set off uh, the fire sprinklers and spawn gremlin army that throws the building into chaos. Billy attempts to lure the gremlins into the lobby where the sunlight will kill all of them. Uh, after Billy briefs Clamp on the gremlin knowledge, Clamp exits through a secret tunnel to cover the front of the building in a giant sheet to trick the creatures. Uh, the gremlins drink genetic serums in the lab. One becomes an intelligent brain gremlin. Another becomes a female and a third becomes a well a giant electric one and kills dr cathier before billy traps it in the uh, building's telephone system all the while television host grandpa fred films the chaos aided by a japanese tourist named mr uh, katsuji uh murray F uh, futterman billy's neighbor from kingston falls who is visiting new york city with his wife sheila is attacked by a bat gremlin hybrid immunized to the sunlight by the brain gremlin with genetic sunblock after fending it off murray realizes that he is not crazy and goes to help uh when clamp escapes the building using the secret route murray uses it to sneak inside to aid billy billy and the chief of security uh foster team up uh but it the enamored female gremlin chases foster off mohawk drinks a spider serum and transforms into a monstrous gremlin spider hybrid he attacks kate and marla but gizmo saves them by killing mohawk with an ignited bottle of whiteout 
Billy's plan to kill the gremlins by flooding the lobby with sunlight fails and the rain clouds block the sun. He instead directs Murray to spray the gremlins with the fire hose, then releases the electric one from the telephone to electrocute and melt all of them. Clamp charges in with the police and press, but sees that the conflict is resolved. Thrilled by this result, he promotes Billy, Kate, Fred, Marla, and hires Mr. Katsuji as a cameraman. Billy and Kate then return home with Gizmo. Foster calls Clamp to notify him that he is trapped in the highest floor of the building. The female gremlin, the sole survivor of the horde, corners him and entices him to marry her. (laughs) Um, So some fun trivia on this. Uh, When the movie... Uh, played in theaters, there was a scene where Dr. Cather begins to tell Billy about the gremlins before the movie is interrupted by the gremlins until they're threatened by Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. Uh, When this movie was released on VHS, which for those of you who are old enough to remember, uh, I'll actually put a picture of one of those up. Uh, The scene was changed to static appearing and the gremlins constantly changing the channels. This caused many people to actually think that it was messed up uh, and return the movie from where they had purchased it from. Uh, when the insane gremlin has Billy sitting in a dentist chair and is attacking him with the dentist tool, at some point he asks, is is it safe? Uh, for many of those uh, that have seemed senseless, but it is actually a nod to the 1976 movie Marathon, Marathon Man, Man. Yeah. Uh, in which the during a scene, Dustin Hoffman is sitting in a dentist chair while tortured with a dentist tool by an ex-Nazi mm-hmm. played by the majestic Sir Lawrence Oliver. Uh, who keeps asking him the same question once and again. Uh, The white-haired man who asks about the gremlin in the ice cream uh, is the film's composer, Jerry Goldsmith. Goldsmith, Uh, Director Joe Dante has a cameo in the film as the director of the Grandpa Fred show. (laughs) Uh, The opening of shot of uh, Manhattan is actually the very same one uh, used in Superman 4. During the beginning of the film... Uh, we are reintroduced to Billy and Kate. If you look very closely, there's a theater in the background of the shot, and the theater marquee is a fictitious sequel to the Howling Eleven. Uh, this is a nod to the film uh, The Howling, which was actually directed by the director Joe Dante. Um, it can it's hard to see on the VHS and DVD copies, but it's uh, in more focus on the Blu-ray versions. Uh, the, and you can probably see it on the... Uh, yeah, actually, I think you can. You can see it on the HBO Max uh, yeah. streaming version as well. Uh, the angry mother who comes out and scolds the theater usher over the film's content during the fourth wall-breaking scene was based on something that happened to director Joe Dante during the early screenings of Gremlins. He was attending a test screening and standing at the back of the theater to get the audience's feedback, and about halfway through, an irate mother dragged her young daughter out and began to scream at him claiming that the film was too scary and that he should be ashamed of himself for making it. Neither Dante nor the woman noticed, but the child had actually slipped away during the commotion. Turns out the child was nowhere near as frightened as the mother had assumed and had hid under a chair so she could watch the rest of the film. (laughs) Uh, Director Joe Dante, who made the original film, didn't originally want to make a sequel as he felt that the original one had was a self-contained story. Uh, Thus the studio decided to move on without him. However, they failed to define an adequate replacement for the director, and being unable to find a satisfactory script, they again approached Dante. Dante agreed to do the sequel if he was given artistic freedom. Mm-hmm. Oh, which, he definitely did. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> uh, which the studio granted, given the success of the first film. Dante decided that since the, he didn't feel a sequel was necessary, he would base the entire film around the fact by making the <laughs> sequel something of a satirical, uh, farcial parody of the and which made light of the original film concept and of making a sequel hence the abundant absurd uh content and numerous meta fourth wall breaking jokes um this film i can't say it's better than the first one uh, i just absolutely love all of the the jokes the callbacks it's hilarious the, Len, Le, Leonard Malt, malton who for many people may may not know he was a he's a film critic i think he's dead or not but anyways he uh, he's literally doing a critic review of Gremlins in this movie. Oh yeah, he's just like Gremlins, this horrible movie with little monsters that eat and then the Gremlins attack. And I'm like, oh. and then the Hulk Hogan, uh, uh, 
the, the Batman the, one. The Batman where where it becomes the bat and, and it flies off, and then you just see the the Batman outline. You're just like, oh my god! And then little little Gizmo's like doing a little workout. He's, oh yeah, he's the doing Rainbow the Rocky, thing, the Rocky. Like, uh, like I'm coming back, you know. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna win this time. Like, and it's literally those like old school like little peg and like hole ones like that he's working out. Yeah, with. yeah. The whole thing is just hilarious. It's a great movie. Yeah. Um, it's one of those movies. This and the first one to me are both movies you can just kind of put on in the background. You don't necessarily have to watch the entire time. Yeah. Uh, He's got the bandana. Oh, yeah. And it's on, you know, uh, Stripes is on fire. And they're like, what happened to him? And he's like, I don't know. Something <laughs> dark. And you just, he's got the bandana. And he's just like. Oh, yeah. He marks he, his face. He's too, got my like, face. Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> but, yeah. So, these are, both of these movies, honestly, to me, about 7.5 to 8. They're not perfect. They're not. The yeah. best movies I've ever watched, but I do love them a lot, and I I watch them every so often. Um, the great Christopher Lee, by the way, is in this. Yeah, uh, call back to Lord of the Rings. Uh, he's in like two scenes, he's but in like everything. But but he was great. Uh, it was like it was like great to see that he's actually like, holy shit! Like that's Christopher Lee, and he's just like he still looks old as like, shit in yeah. this though. He's like, do you want do you want diseases, germs? <laughs> I can give you that, and then. Uh, course the uh the the brainy uh gremlins hilarious well what we really want is just he's like smoking cigarettes like and got glasses like just he just appeared with glasses and he's like well uh really what we want is equal rights and you know and and then he's like i'll just i don't know where to shoot one of the gremlins like see was that civilized that wasn't civilized you know so oh man uh, that movie had some sparks to it for sure I, i'm with nick though it's i would rate about the same um i don't know if we caught the first one with you or no i just rated it now it was no. 7.5 7. to an 8. Okay. i mean they're both i rate them the same they're both yeah. fantastic movies i absolutely adore them they're fun to watch yeah i mean the first one is different oh yeah from the second one like like the seriousness of even like when she goes there's another call back and she begins and then it's like do we really have time for this like literally and it's like, okay, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you never find out. Like, <sighs> I mean, they had jokes in the first one and stuff, but it was a lot less, or a lot, there was a lot less of them. Um, all they want to do is just watch Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's literally all. Wait a minute. I know who I could go to. There's gremlins in the thing, Mr. Hulk. What? There's gremlins, you know, and then Hulk's like, "You better put the show back on, or I'll, you know." He's, I'm like, "Oh yeah, he goes Hulk like, on them." Hulk, yeah. I was like, "What is happening?" Sorry, folks. He's like, "Sorry, folks, that won't happen again." Like, <laughs> like I kind of really would love to just see that, like that whole fifteen minute, twenty minutes, just four wall, just you know, in theaters, that. That'd be just funny. in theaters, yeah. But, but yeah, so then moving on from those, uh, we'll yeah. actually move on to, this is more of like speculation, speculation and like <laughs> just random rumors that have been yeah. floating around for like years now, but yeah. Gremlins 3, um, so there's been talk about it for many years, but it seems likely if it does end up happening, HBO Max will actually likely end up having it on their streaming service. Um, looks like many of the characters will be reprising their roles. Uh, so far from what we can see, it looks to be a continuation more than instead of a reboot uh which is good news for me Mm -hmm. i i don't want to i don't want to reboot the first one was fine yeah we got too many reboots anyways yeah um and for those who might be worried uh it doesn't look like they'll be going the cgi route which i absolutely am fine with they need to keep doing they need to go back to puppetry and doing the the stuff because i'm i don't know about you but i'm sick of cgi tired of it it's usually terrible yeah, and it's just it, it's very off-putting and jarring. Yeah, usually it's the uh, it's just CGI. Like it was, it, it's there's good CGI and bad CGI, and it's and usually it's usually bad. Yeah, um, but I but I think that was what you think that was it for uh, Gremlins. Yeah, um, I believe this third one's possibly gonna be held by Chris Columbus. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. call back to him again, um. But uh, otherwise, not much is really out there, so who knows? Yeah, it's a lot of speculation, Reddit, and other random things, but I did see it, and it uh, the main character, uh, I can't remember exactly what his name is, but I'll... I'll Billy? I'll, yeah, Billy. Yeah. Um, the character, or the actor who actually plays him has mentioned before that they'll that he's been approached about this, Yeah. Um, and he did that on Twitter. 
um, on his personal verified account. So I actually looked into that. So there has been mention of this. It's just one of those things. I think it's like Evil Dead where they're having a hard time. Kind of placing it. Yeah, getting like full green light. I mean, uh, movies really like it's not like a huge IP. So it wasn't like. Yeah, where they'll just be like, yeah, go ahead. Spend millions of dollars. Yeah. Do it up. And now mo- studios are getting very nervous. Um, for one, I understand Willow, um, which just came out also oh, on Disney+. Yeah. Plus. Um, we're not really talking about Willow per se on this episode, but apparently that just came out with perform- poor performance. So I think that's going to f- really scare off these other studios from like, like not the more well-known IPs, but... Like, you know, should we try to dig that well, up? They don't they don't make the same money that they used to on yeah. these movies because, you know, they could make their sale, their money back on like sales, the DVDs, VHS. Yeah, VHS, yeah that's true. They don't, they don't get that anymore because now everything goes to streaming, streaming services. services so there's yeah. no reason to go out and spend your hard earned, you know, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, whatever yeah. it may be on these unless you're really, really a fan of them. Like I usually if I'm really a big fan of it, I'll buy it. hundred percent. Yeah. But. There's very few things lately that I've been a fan of. So, I mean, especially that MCU stuff, like he said. Yeah. Whew, so Burned glad out. it's done. I'm just glad. Yeah, I'm just glad that. Hope. I mean, I'm. I'm really not looking forward to the new MCU. To be no, they need to you. get away from but, the She-Hulk stuff. But that's for another time. But yeah. Um. But I think I think that would conclude our episode. Yeah. So, um, we again thank you as always for um, you know, staying to the end. Again, um. We are uh, on Instagram, and we do have a TikTok, yeah. but we're not really putting anything up yet because Nick and I are pretty busy. Um, actually, I just worked earlier today, so that's why I'm really tired. <laughs> so I've been I've been up literally at around what five thirty this morning, and it's yeah. it's almost ten o'clock at night. So yeah, but um, again, uh, we thank you we, again. We'd love to hear from you guys, and I um, yeah. think we'll call it a quits for today. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.